Alright, this video is going to try and get you up and running with Mechanum Drive setting up your teleop for FTC Robotics. When you download the FTC Robot Controller app code from GitHub, you're going to see that it comes with two main folders, the FTC Robot Controller and the Team Code. The FTC Robot Controller is containing all the app code and then you're going to put your own code here in the Team Code, specifically in the Java folder. Now when you write your code, you don't have to start from scratch. They gave you some very nice examples and you can find them by going up into the Java folder and the external samples folder within FTC Robot Controller. I personally really like to start with the hardware push bot. So go ahead and choose that file, copy it, and then we're going to paste it into our team code so that we can edit it and change it to what we want. Now my robot's not a push bot, it's a Mechanum drive, so I'm going to give it a different name. Alright, now in the editor side of the screen, we can look at the file we just copied. And the top of the file has import statements, and import statements bring in the code that we need from some other file. Next, in this particular editor in Android Studio, we have some gray text, and those gray lines are actually comments, and you can see if it wasn't colored gray, you'd still know it's a comment because it has the asterisks and slashes in front of it. The comments are not instructions for the robot or the computer, but they are for humans so that we can read and understand the program better. Now the remainder of this file is a class, and a class is for holding and containing a bunch of related instructions to the program or the robot. Specifically, the goal of this class is to list out and set up the motors needed, or even sensors as well, for the robot so that we can reuse this in all of our op modes and we don't need to type in motor information on every program. All right, my robot's very simple. I'm not going to have any servo motors. I'm just going to have the DC motors that I'm using for driving the robot. All right, I have four DC motors that I'm using to propel or drive this robot. I have a front left drive motor, a front right drive motor, and then I have my two rear motors. And what I'm really doing on these first four lines is just listing out saying I have four DC motors and I'm giving them names. All right, next we have some variables that I'm not using. They were for the arms. Next is something very important. It's called the hardware map. The hardware map is how we're going to connect the names in our program, front, left, drive, to the actual motors in real life. We'll see how that's done here in the init function. Init is short for initialize or setting up the robot. You can see that it takes a hardware map, and now we're going to use that hardware map to connect the names in the program to the name of the motors that you gave on your phone. So at the top of this class we created four motor names like front left drive and I want to take that hardware map and tell it to connect it to the motor FL. And the FL is what I was naming my motors when I went into the configuration of my robot and set what motors have what name. All right, so I have my four motors, front, right, drive, is equal to the mapping, retrieving a DC motor with the name FR that I configured on my phone. I also have a back left drive and a back right drive. So I'm connecting all my motors, giving them names in the program, connecting that, attaching those names to the names to the corresponding motors on the real-life robot. Now that we've connected the motors, we need to set them up a little bit more. Now, depending on what brand of motors you're using, you might need to tell certain motors to go backwards or forwards based on their relationship or orientation on the robot because the motors are facing 
opposite directions on the left side versus the right side. In other words, I want my left side motors to be running the opposite direction from the right side motors. And in my case, I'm using Andy Mark motors, so I need to reverse them from the old version of motors that we used to use. Next step, now that we have the direction settled, I don't want my robot to run or drive until we actually are playing the game or have started an op mode. So I'm going to take all my motors and I'm going to set them to have a power of zero, meaning they're not going to run. They are in a turned off mode. Finally, the last thing I need to do to set up my DC drive motors is at this point I'm not using any encoders. Encoders are used for getting really fine control of the motors and I'm not going to use those in this uh, video. So I'm going to turn off the encoders and say that the motors are running without encoders. The rest of this code is related to ARMS I'm not going to implement, so I'm just going to delete that. Alright, so we've finished writing the code that sets up the motors of the robot. Now we're going to go back up to the external samples and find an actual teleop op mode that we can change so that we can actually drive our Mechanum robot. So we're going to go ahead and copy the pushbot teleop point of view uh, op mode and then we're going to paste that also into our team code. Alright, I'm also going to change the name of this one so that it's more representative of the program that I'm writing. I'm writing a Mechanum teleop so that's what I'm going to call it. Now this file might look pretty similar to the last one. We've got some comments at the top and then we have some import statements where we are importing files with necessary code. Then we have some more comments describing the goal of the program. Since we're changing the program I'm going to delete those comments. Now here's two very interesting lines. This teleop line you're going to want to change it so that the name is representative of your robot because this is the name that's going to show up for the program or op mode when you run it on your phone. The next line can be really frustrating and you're going to either need to comment it out or delete it because right now your op mode is disabled. So you can comment it out by putting two slashes in front of it saying don't pay attention to this or you can delete it. All right, now we're down into the class, the Mechanum Teleop class, which is going to hold our Teleop code. You can see there's a fair amount of it. Now, the main part of this class is the function called Run Op Mode. So when you press that play button to run the op mode on your phone, this is the code that's going to run and give instructions to the robot. Now you can see the code references a hardware pushbot. That's not my robot, so I need to change the name to reference the name of the robot that I created in that first file. So mine was called Hardware Mechanum. That's the robot name that I want to put there, and that's the type of robot. The next two variables are related to the arm, and I'm not using those, so I'm just going to delete that. Now we're into the run op mode the most important function to run this teleop mode. Alright, in the beginning of this function you can see that we have some variables. I'm not going to need all of them because some of them are for an arm. I will need some to contain the values coming from the controller and then feed that information to the motors. The two values that I want to store are an X value which I'm going to call X1 because I want to think of the joystick as an XY coordinate plane. Like on a coordinate plane, the X goes to the left and right. I want to have the controller values from that control whether or not the robot is going to go left or right. The Y 
coordinate is going to control if it goes forwards or backwards or up and down on the joystick. Remember the init function in the hardware map from the first file we wrote? Well, that's the next piece of code that's being run right here. That's the robot.init on the hardware map is the code we wrote before. Next we have some telemetry functions. We can use the telemetry functions for printing information to the phone screen so that we are aware of what the program is doing. The next function, once you've chosen your teleop, you actually have to play it before it'll start. And the wait for start is what handles the waiting until you actually press the play button. The next block of code is a while loop. And it says we're going to do this while the op mode is active. So everything in between these curly braces is going to be run over and over. Now we have a comment here describing this program. And since we're changing it, I'm going to remove the comment. Next, you can see we got some lines of code here ref referencing the game pads. I'm going to use a single joystick to control the drive of this mechanum drive. So I'm going to take the results from the joystick and put them into my x and y variables. Notice the y1 variable is getting the value from the y direction of the left joystick. And actually we want to put a negative sign in front of it because for some reason the joystick is opposite in terms of positive or negative than what we would think. I want the x1 variable to get the value of the left joystick moving in the x direction. I don't need this code because I'm not going to have any turning right now. I'm just trying to get us to a point where we can test the robot and make sure everything is working to this point. And then for me, my robot and my controllers, the motors I'm using, they all run in a range from negative 1 to 1. So I don't need to worry about normalizing the value coming from the controller to the motor. They both have a maximum of 1 and a minimum of negative 1. So I'm going to remove that code as well. Now we need to take each of those motors that are on our robot. So we're going to go robot dot front left drive or robot dot front right drive to access that motor and we want to set the power on each of these motors. It's not going to be zero to stop like it was before. Now we're actually going to take the values coming from the controller and put those into the set power function. For now, just so we can check our robot and make sure we're all on the same page, we're going to give all of them the value of Y1 meaning the robot's only going to drive forward and backward. All right, here's a bunch of ARM code that I'm not going to use in this example robot, so I'm just going to remove that. And then we have some telemetry code, which was, if you recall, to print information from the robot onto the screen. And if your robot's misbehaving, sometimes printing things to the phone screen will give you insight into what the robot's actually trying to do. So I'm going to print to the screen the values of X1 and Y1 so I can verify that the controller is doing what I think it should be doing. And this last little bit I'm going to keep it. What this sleep does is say give back control to the phone to run other parts of the phone. Don't give all the time to our program. So we're gonna put a tiny little sleep in there so that it our program doesn't dominate the resources of the phone. Now if everything is set up correctly and your phone is plugged in, you should see that it's showing up at the top. I'm using a ZTE phone still, and you press the play button to download it and put it onto your phone. Before we drive the robot, let's take a look at the mechanum wheels and notice which way the rollers are pointing. If you have them installed correctly, when you look from above, you should see that the rollers make a X. Now, this is how these wheels work. If you want to drive forward, obviously, all the wheels should be rolling forward. If you want to go backwards, all the wheels need to rotate in the reverse direction. To drive to the left, or strafe to the left, the left side wheels need to rotate towards each other, and the far side wheels need to rotate in the opposite direction from each other. To strafe right, 
you need the wheels that are closest to the side that's turned or moving towards to rotate inwards and the far side wheels to rotate outwards when looking from above. According to the program we wrote, the only thing that should be happening for our robot is we drive forwards or backwards, nothing left or right. So if your robot isn't behaving the way you expect right now, you should go back and fix it before moving on to the next step. Now let's go back to the program in the teleop file and the only change we're going to make is we are going to now fix it so that we can strafe to the left and to the right. If you go back to the drawings of how these mechanum wheels work and look at the directions of the wheels for moving forward or backward or left or right, the front left drive and the back right drive always must move in the same direction. And the front right drive and the back left drive must always move in the same direction. So the front left drive is going to get our x1 value and our other two motors will be getting the y1 value. Now you can see the robot's moving the way we expected. I push forward, it goes forward, backward, backward, left to the left, and right to the right. But you may have noticed that I was actually using the controller rotated off 45 degrees. Now the joystick is essentially moving a point around the coordinate plane. And I want to rotate that point counterclockwise 45 degrees. And we can use trigonometry to perform that rotation of the point. So let's go back to our teleop program and add a new variable, a double. A double means that it can be a decimal value. We want to call it 45 in rads or 45 degrees in radians. And we're going to set that equal to pi divided by 4. And I want to go counterclockwise so that's going to be negative. Now I want to figure out what the cosine of 45 degrees is. So I'm going to create another variable and store that value in there. And so cosine of the variable that I'd created for 45 degrees. I also need the sine of 45 degrees. And so I'm going to make a variable for that. Again, these are floating point decimals, so we're going to call them doubles. The last two variables I need are a new x and a new y, so I'm going to call those x2 and y2 to hold the values from the original rotated x1 and y1. All right, so now let's go down into our while loop where we really control what's happening. We're going to keep the x1 and y1 values that we get from the joystick and then we just want to convert them into a new x2 and a new y2 and feed those values to the motors. Because we want to rotate them 45 degrees so I can hold the controller comfortably. So remember our formulas look like this. So I'm going to make y2 equal to y1 times the cosine of 45 plus x1 times the sine of 45. x2 is going to be x1 times the cosine of 45 minus y1 times the sine of 45. Then all I have to do is to update the motors to run off the values of x2 and y2. All right, let's check it out. If your robot's not driving the way you would expect, I would check the wiring. Maybe you've got the names backwards on the wrong motors in the phone. Uh, maybe you got a negative sign in the wrong place. Could be you have something wrong in your trig or you're giving the values to the wrong motor.